Welcome, everybody, to the American Space Museum. I'm Mark Marquette. We're so glad you're with us today to stay curious with a special guest, Mr. Frank Custer, who is a shuttle vehicle inspector and also a quality control person. Uh, QC number 295. That would be me. How are you, Frank? Good, how are you? Well, I'm enjoying getting to meet you and know you. Mm -hmm. uh, Frank came into the museum a couple weeks ago, and we found out that he knew some of our artifacts and had some questions about them and bingo i corralled him in to be on stay curious you're going to enjoy uh, frank custer here and the stories he's got to tell today we're going to focus on the mate demate that got this vehicle behind us on our green screen the shuttle carrier aircraft to and from los angeles and around the country so uh, uh, Frank, uh, enjoy having you here. Tell us a little bit about where you grew up and how you got involved with the shuttle. A little thumbnail of your life. Well, I was raised in Michigan. Oh, you were. Feel, feel bad for you there because we got Dave Stangy from Michigan watching and, you and me both. Larry Pusker. <laughs> you and me both. <laughs> and, uh, when I was 18, I moved to L.A. That ended pretty quick. About a year there, I moved to Florida and I joined the Air Force where I was an avionics technician. And what kind of vehicles? Primarily OV-10s and O2s. You see the O2s flying out of Tyco every now and then. Okay. But uh, anything that broke down, KC-135s, C-130s, whatever. And when I got out of the Air Force on May 5th of 85, and two weeks later, I was working for Lockheed as an inspector. Interesting. On the space shuttle. Yep. Well, you have been an inspector off and on there. Uh, he was also uh, a, uh, uh, working for Lockheed Martin. And then, of course, they segued into the United uh, Space Alliance, USA. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about him being a quality paper review guy and what that meant here in a minute. But first, we want to... Uh, uh, well, tell, no, tell us now what the quality paper review uh, person was when you were working on the thermal protection system uh, that's it that department was initiated after the columbia or the challenger accident mm -hmm. they they went through a lot of the paperwork for the board and they found a lot of problems with the paperwork mm -hmm. so what qpr had to do was review 100 percent of the documents for discovery's return to flight sts 126 and when they reviewed those then we'd pass it on. We'd have a special stamp, and we'd uh, and we'd approve that paper and send it through. Okay. But we had to verify all the steps were worked and stamped. Completed. That is piles of paperwork. It sounds like that was a lot of paperwork. Yeah. Yeah. I couldn't even begin to tell you how many. Uh, 1980, of course, uh, 86, the disaster. So 88, return to flight. So we were still on uh, uh, hole punch uh, continuous printers back then, I believe, right? With a dot matrix? No. Yeah, dot matrix. I haven't yeah. seen any dot matrix, but we did have microfiche. For... I mean, in, in 80, when this was going on, yeah. it was uh, still IBM Selectric compute uh, typewriters and stuff. Yeah, not... Uh, well, wow, it had been a lot. Well, that's interesting. Just the kind of jobs that are out there. Uh, well, we've talked with Frank about uh, uh, Shuttle Fest, and uh, uh, one day I predict you'll be part of our Shuttle Fest. Shuttle Fest Two is going to be April fifteenth. We are going to do the press release on that tomorrow. Uh, some of the details of what we've set up to entertain you from nine to five on that Saturday, and you'll enjoy. Uh, celebrating the launch, the base to space, the mobile launch platform too, that uh, is kind of a important, one of these important things that you don't know much about, just like the mate demate device that Frank's going to turn us on to. You know much about the mobile launch platforms? I know I got lost in them a lot. Did you? <laughs> There's only two floors in there and I would inevitably get lost. I understand it was like being in a ship yeah. uh, because the builders were ship builders. Knee knockers and, and everything. Knee knockers all over the place, yeah. Did you get lost in the dark and ever see a pair of eyes looking at you in the distance? No, I'd have quit. <laughs> You'd have quit. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, we loved talking about the shuttle era, Frank. And, of course, dear to our hearts are the shuttles of the month. We kind of build programs around that. Ten shuttles launched in the month of uh, March. 
unfortunately, Challenger was never launched of its 10 flights. Uh, but since we're talking about the landing of the shuttle and how to ferry it across the country, Frank, I think you'd be interested to know the month of March had six flights land right here at Kenny Space Center on that super long runway. So you could just tow them into the garage. Three landed at Edwards Air Force Base. So uh, maybe you were involved in some of those three uh, to get them across California. And of course, the one famous one, STS-3, landed at White Sands uh, after being delayed in a storms out there at Edwards. So uh, uh, that's what we're going to talk about is, is this uh, uh, getting the shuttle from California back here. And sometimes you had to send it to California to be fixed up, right? Right. We Re was, Refurbished is what I mean by fixed there up. There were modifications that they would do in Palmdale, and we would send the orbiters back for that. Well, it is spring break, and uh, by golly, Marty, what is that up in the sky? Is that a bird? Is that a, a plane? What is that up there? And, of course, okay. that... What, Marty? Are you really asking me? Yeah, I'm really asking you. <laughs> sure, yeah. I'm asking you and Frank there. Hang up. There's uh, sky? Uh, oh, yeah, there is sky. Okay. Yeah, Thank there's you. some sky up there. Exactly. Uh, anyway, it is spring break, like I said, and you see the shuttle flying over a beach. Uh, you got a windsurfer up there and a couple of T-38s uh, following it, which, uh, uh, you know, took uh, the beautiful pictures behind there. And by golly, there it is over Griffith Observatory flying over that actually is Endeavor being brought to its final resting place at the Los Angeles Museum. I saw you cringe uh, 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 saying that like so many shuttle workers do. Uh, and then look at all the people there in Griffith Observatory, favorite ho favorite Hollywood set. Uh, have you seen the uh, three shuttles in captivity? It took me a it took me till last year actually to go over to KSC and see Atlantis. Oh really? I just didn't have the heart to do it. Mm -hmm. When I saw it, it was hung up there like Billy Big Mouth Bass, and I half expected it to swing out and start singing. Take you know. Oh, Take really? me by the river or Take something. Take me by the river. <laughs> okay, it's well, sad to say. that's a little cynical view of what is, I think, a very beautiful display. It is. Display. They did, I they mean, did a beautiful display. The reveal, the reveal, come on, the reveal during the whole movie thing and everything. Did you go through all that? Yeah, I wanted them to get that over with. I just wanted them to see my girl. All right, well, and this is how space shuttle workers are attached to the, these beautiful birds we see it time and time again. And uh, uh, and we're enjoying seeing you reminisce about this. Let me go get off the beach there, Mark. Uh, there is uh, the way it was ferried. That we've seen some gorgeous shots of it over the mountains and so forth. Uh, and then, but uh, the the, the the pilots and uh, navigators and so forth kind of become celebrities of this down the line. Uh, and uh, they put on the side the flights and so forth this i don't believe this is the display in houston because of the background but at johnson space center they do have a replica uh, of the, the shuttle on top of one of the, the the boeing 747 birds i've never seen that with the oh you haven't with the side paintings on it yeah the side paintings like uh, and the number of flights on there including the free flights yeah that they this. had there that the the approach and landing test was how they pioneered putting the shuttle on top of a adapted 747. These are two of the pilots and flight engineers of 1981. Many of you, like I said, collect these guys' autographs. I, I, I suspect they've mostly passed away. Tom McMurty, Vic Horton, Fitz Fulton, and Ray Young, right to left in, uh, in there. So just you know, kind of a tribute. Do you think about, you see these iconic pictures. There's someone flying this thing, all right? And I've always said that I would love Wilbur and Orville Wright to see this, <laughs> you know, because I, I don't, I understand a lot of physics and science and stuff, Frank, but when I don't understand how those luxury cruise ships float, all right, 10, 15 stories tall, and then the flight of this thing, oh my gosh, uh, you know, the boardroom where someone suggested to ferry it across uh, uh, the country on an adapted 747. Frank, why couldn't they do this um, 
on railroads or, or uh, uh, America's highways. Well, the wingspan and the and the height of the thing is going to preclude you from getting through any underpasses. And mm -hmm. the railroad, you know, you're going to hit trees. Those end up with enough damage. We don't need to damage them on trees. So, uh, so that was the logical choices you had to, to had to fly it around. So, but we're going to look at this uh, a little more closer, and and uh, I wanted to just uh, you like my vest? I look pretty sharp today. That's very sporty, Mark. Good. Well, I want to brag that this is a Jean Wright vest, and Jean Wright's a good friend of our museum, and I haven't given her a shout out in a while. Uh, but uh, so sister creations on Facebook and you could own something that looks like this. So thank you, Gene Wright, for supporting our museum uh, out there. So uh, here we get you're out there uh, on an airfield somewhere here in Kenny Space Center and you look around the corner and uh, here comes the jet coming in. All right. What that sound like? And I'm jealous of all the people on the Space Coast and around the country that have actually seen it in the air, because I never did. It just sounded to me like a normal jet landing, maybe, you know, because they're powering down at that part mm -hmm. to land. And then it sneaks around the corner. Whoop, where'd that one go? Oh, well, we missed one, Marty. How'd that happen? All right, well, it snuck around the corner. There, it's sneaking around the corner. Those got those got moved around there, and I just kind of that would flip me out to hear the jet engines and turn around. You think an airplane? There's a shuttle on top. Yeah, of. you look up and you see the vertical stabilizer from the orbiter going by, and then the whole thing comes into view. And uh, this is where it's going. And uh, where is that, Frank? That's out at the shuttle landing facility at KSC. And what? No parking lot? I mean, uh, who's got the the pass on the south side and who's got it on the north side? Well, they, <laughs> they got they got a small ops building there that does have a parking lot. Uh huh. That fills up quick, usually from the you know day shift is in there to catch the thing. So we're going to learn about this because I know nothing about it. First question I'm going to ask is, uh, this is the demate part of it. I would suspect it could be the mating. No, that's, but, that's it just landed and it's going in. Uh, and uh, we got the typical afternoon thunderclouds here <laughs> go, going on, which had to been fun to deal with. How did, how was, how much fun was that to deal with? Well, you always bring your rain gear with you if you're going to the pad or the mm -hmm. SLF. Is there lightning rods out there? No. No. But, you know, they call over the PA system base wide if you're in a, if there's lightning within 10 nautical miles, so you stay indoors then. And, it, and there's an indoor place for you to go. Here. Yeah, there's some, uh, there's some trailers off to the right of that. So I'm looking at 15 cars there. How many uh, workers are involved in this? Uh, there's actually probably, if you turn around, there's another three quarters of a mile of cars parked oh, on both sides wow. of the road. There's a lot of folks there. Holy cow. It's so some people up. have to walk a mile from their car to get to the mate demate? Space business ain't pretty sometimes. <laughs> it's not. All right. I'm going the wrong way, Peach Fuzz. Uh, no, I was going the right way. We had that out of... No, I did have it wrong way. There we go. Now I'm getting with it. There we go. So I had to show... I had that one picture out of whack there you know, when to show you where they were going. When it taxis up there, they, they leave the APU running and they start shutting down the engines and they hook the tug up to it. Everything after it gets to the apron there is done by tug so they tow it in park it and then when they're ready to receive it in the mdd the tug pulls it into there too so the bird's still not completely shut down the apu is running okay auxiliary power unit all right why do they run that across country well they need they need the apu going once they shut down the engines for power on the on the sca okay all right i got you all right there's a gorgeous picture side view of it there uh again the typical uh afternoon clouds of uh summertime uh i think this is 117 I, and that's that's the night kind of the same angle there day and night so uh how long did it take to demate normally it's uh from landing to getting it into the opf is usually three shifts Day three shift, eight hour shifts 12. three 12 hour shifts so 36 hours day shift would normally depending on when the thing landed day shift would a lot of times have it ready to pull into the mdd 
and second shift would go ahead and bring it in, work till 3.34 in the morning, and then day shift would come back in. Then when we come in for our next shift, they'd usually have it in the OPF, but they'd still have the power units and the cooling units outside the OPF door. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Very interesting. Now, Frank, you said your job was a vehicle inspector. Yes. And you told me you went wherever the vehicle went. Right. So what are you doing there? What are you inspecting? Who are you watchdogging? Well, there's different there's different jobs on there when they the yellow part, the sling there, when they bring that down, you have to connect them up at four attach points, then take a little bit of weight off it then the cranes will lift it. You have to inspect as they remove the uh, the attach points, the forward and the ET attach points. And let's say you inspect opening the hatch. You have to be there for that. By, by that, you mean you're looking over someone's shoulder as they're actually opening the hatch. Yeah, verifying on the paper. You have, Everybody's on the net there on a headset. Okay. So they're calling. You may have copies of the paperwork. And that one shot you saw with people sitting at a table? Yes. They're reading the steps off. We'll see that at the end. They're reading the steps off. Okay. In the operational manual. Oh, okay. OMI. Operational maintenance. OMI. Operational manual. Maintenance instructions. Ma operational maintenance instructions. So he's okay. reading those off, whether it's the aft ET or the forward ET, or whether you're opening the hatch, running cables in for the hydraulics, whatever. So somebody who could be at the other end of the, of this structure is reading the steps to you over a headset and what they should be doing. Well, if I was on one of the attach points, I'd probably have a copy of the paperwork with me uh -huh. and they read it off over the net and we follow along on the paper and the tech will start doing mm. the job. Okay. Uh, oh, where are going there? There's the attach points you were talking yeah. about. They're at the, the nose end of it. I'm always curious, Frank, you're this close to the vehicle. You're touching the vehicle, yeah. right? Uh, it came from space uh, a day ago, you know. Uh, is it emitting any odors that, that you could say that smells like space? Or, I mean, I know there's a lot of vapors that they've eliminated coming out now of they... toxic fumes and stuff. But does it have any kind of patina like that? The only real smell you get is when you open the hatch and you smell what seven people have been like for several days we've heard that before yeah. you hold your head actually away from the hatch when you open it we've heard yeah uh okay well i just kind of thought you know i don't know if you if there's a grease smell or a uh you know you walk into a, a somebody's garage shop or something you usually now, when it first lands there is a smell to it to me it always smelled like when your mom left the iron on oh okay I mean, all right, yeah, I, I, the mom, the iron's on the ironing board there, and you walk smell. by it, and you kind of get a little little whiff of it. Uh, but little... at this point, there's no smell on the exterior. Right, right. Uh, any other f things that, that that caught your eye that, that that you look at to say, oh, um... there are a lot of steps there. <laughs> this is um, how many stories? Okay, we're actually. Uh, my my shuttle information here where's my shuttle scroll uh, uh that that's a big structure and i wanted to look up my shuttle scroll to see how high the orbiter was off the ground i would get the home. cabin was 23 feet uh up from the ground so the or so the uh that's another 30 to that's probably 50 feet that the cabin of the 747 is off the ground that thing's 100 feet in the air, and that's that's a two that's a 150 foot structure, huh? And it's not all just stairs, because some of them you have to climb up to one point and then get down on a structure to go out on the arms that go around it to hook the sling up, and so it's kind of going. No up elevator, go no elevators. No. no, no. Okay. I would get home at four in the morning, and the first thing I'd do is put cold packs on my knees. Really, from climbing up and down the whole thing. Yeah. Huh? That's interesting, all right. No hazard pay, huh? <laughs> <laughs> he laughs. You Here's a beautiful picture. Uh, odd picture you don't see very often. Uh, we're going to ask Marty to point out the external tank attach point that you see at the under the nose. Oh, there they are, under the uh, 
That's the ET. That's attack. what that is. Those are the ET attach points. The uh, the ET doors are locked open in that position. That's how it gets. That's the aft fittings to hook onto the external tank and on the SCA. Uh huh. We did a great program with Terry uh, White about the those uh, that whole area right there and, and the complexity of it. And shutting you, those doors and, and you stuff. can see how the body flap fits up into the tail cone there oh it does yeah the body flap gray is right up against the tail cone uh marty's pointing that out yeah, the tail the... cones covering the engines yeah for aerodynamics right flying across the country um uh, uh and and the circle what's he have in the circle there? that's the forward et attach point there where it hooks onto the tank in the forward area and that's the forward part when it hooks on to the SCA. And a 100-ton spaceship is hanging vertically, okay, off yeah. those attached points there. Well, I mean, all it's way, hanging, right? on the launch pad. I mean, yeah. I have to think of it that way. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's, that's just amazing to me in there. Uh, so what's going on here, Frank? Well, you see the... Uh... The step up platform that they have there with the techs working on the uh, the LH side. LH, yeah. Because you have to you get in there and you have to make sure the weight is right on the orbiter before you start pulling bolts. And you've got this seven forty seven beneath you that you have to make sure you don't drop a hammer on and stuff like that, right? And Not I, you. You're watching them work. That's their problem. No, no problem. Yeah. <laughs> No? You have to have your tools tethered. Okay. But I'm just saying, I love, there's always safety involved. Always, yeah. uh, uh, every step of your checklist there. So they say. So they say. So they say. <laughs> you beg the first. dipper. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and there's a close-up of what yeah. they're doing there. Again, more climbing. Wow. Yeah, climbing up and out there and, and uh, hydraulics, testing that contraption that those guys are on they're not even at a hydraulics point yet very very interesting there and there's another close-up of the structure there uh this is uh it was just kept in the open when it wasn't used yeah and uh we know the elements are harsh uh, on the seawater and so forth on the coast there was there did you know about any routine maintenance that they had to do to... i don't i don't know what they actually did you could you could feel you know the uh, pitting on the structure when you go up you holding the handrails or whatever really okay so he got yeah I'm, i'd say I'm he sure got weather warned over the 30 years of the program i'm sure they had maintenance on it yeah and, and probably some replacements and stuff like that on it there uh and there's a close-up of the on the orbiter are these attach points yeah two on each side right right built into the thing and and uh they're they're the same ones they're the same attach points they use when they go vertical in the vab mm -hmm. and they're also the attach points for the four forward and aft jacks the forward ones are the aft jacks fit into the et mm -hmm. area okay and the forward jacks go into the forward cups there this is Endeavor we're looking at. You see the OR there. And the black uh, windows there aren't windows. Those are the uh, doors that open and close to right. pressurize and depressurize the, the, uh, the cargo bay there. And uh, love these pictures. Frank's provided these for us. Really, I, I found just a couple of them on the Internet. But hope you all are enjoying this conversation with Frank Custer and uh, enjoying a, a look at something that maybe you know more about it than than I do. I don't literally don't know much about it. Knew that they exist. These mate to mate devices. Uh, of course, one would be out at Edwards Air Force Base. One here at Kennedy Space Center. When they landed at White Sands, they didn't have it out there. They used cranes. Yes. Out there, and we'll talk about that on Stay Curious maybe next week. Celebrating that launch is March twenty second, and our good uh, Jack Lausma on that, and Gordon Fullerton. So here it is. Uh, Marty, do a, do a circle on that uh, attach point there to the ET. Uh, uh, how is that? How is, that uh, is that like just 
screwed in like a light bulb or what? <laughs> How is that, Frank? It's, it's bolted in there pretty good. And then there, then the uh, then there's uh, like a flange at the bottom of that that hooks onto another one on the SCA. And they bolt that down. Uh huh. Once you get weight off it, then you go ahead and take the bolts out. Very interesting. It, it, uh, uh, that's like that. And it has, has to be covered up for reentry. The opening there. Yeah, they have a panel that goes over that. It's called the arrowhead. Okay. Very, very important panel, I would say. I would say. Because that's, uh, that's the hottest point you're looking at there, the nose. You see the patina of it, how it's... The RC3. Uh, the uh, RCC. Reinforced carbon carbon. Reinforced carbon carbon. That's the nose and the wing tips. Uh, and, uh, you know, again, a lot of technology in that nose aerodynamically. Yeah. Uh, people wouldn't believe the, the, uh, algorithm, the equations and stuff over that thing to make the size of it there. And you can see they're lowered down there. The SCA is gone. They're getting ready to put the gear down at that point. And there is gear down. Ta-da. Ta-da. And now it's back on Earth, all right, finally, after being suspended in the air there for a while. Uh, to see this 100-ton spaceship just suspended up there, man, that, to me, was is very interesting. Uh, is there a sway to it? I mean, does it move around a little bit? I never noticed it really moving around. Okay. I'm sure it can. Because uh, you can push it around on the, on the pad, I've been told. You could actually push it, and, and it would... You have some flex to it there. But uh, very cool pictures there, Frank. Thank you for sharing these. We love yeah. looking at this. There's the wheels down. And uh, are they, do you have to go up in the uh, the cockpit and uh, push a button to lower them? Or are they mechanically done? On... No, it's done, I think, remotely with, you know, and you hook the uh, hydraulic mule up to it. Mm -hmm. And the panel that's hooked up to drops the gear. Okay. Go ahead and correct me if I'm wrong. There you go. Uh, all right. So you were talking about a little workstation there uh, that uh, yeah. the, the uh, most of these contractors, uh, NASA, maybe uh, who are we looking at there? Not just the, the people at the staff there. Yeah, the guy probably with the beard is running me running whatever step is being done right there. Okay, that's where they're, the command post for the steps being done, talking to people on headphones uh, as uh, Frank clicks off that they're doing it right there. And they also have a, a QC in the trailer that is following along on a hard on a hard buy book. Okay. So they're verifying the steps are done on that. Now on your clipboard there, okay, I assume you had a clipboard, right? No. No? What'd you have? That you were... Either a binder or just paper or a folder. Okay. Did you use ink pen or pencil? Pen. Pen? It's got to be, it's a government document. It's got to be black or blue-black ink. I that's, didn't know that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, pencil, you could erase stuff, right? Yeah, we so, don't erase because we don't make did they Did they say blue or black ink? I know some places it there, said black ink only. There was a while that it was only black or blue-black ink. I okay. think they gave way to blue after a while. <laughs> All right. Crazy questions I know I'm asking here, Frank, but maybe you have some on your mind, Marty. Anybody have any questions today for a great guest here, Mr. Frank Custer? No questions. Uh, Daniel DeMano made a comment. Uh, the attach points like these are common in large aircraft, but uh, jacking to perform landing gear maintenance and checks. Just FYI. And you being in the Air Force, a lot of this wasn't pioneered for the shuttle. Other air, other aircraft needed these attach points for things. Yeah, but they were modified specifically for the shuttle. Right? Of course, yeah. Because, like, the forward jacks have a 90-degree angle to go into that. I mm -hmm. never found that on an aircraft. You always lift from underneath. Okay. Well, they didn't have to reinvent the mousetrap, though, to this technique. They were partway there. Okay, good, good. All right, and uh, this I kind of struck me as like uh, uh, what uh, the aft end had the, the laser ruler, and so you got to get out the old tape measure. Tape measure there. What's he doing there? He's measuring the distance from the wing to the ground because you don't want to lower the gear and have it just slam into the ground because you didn't have it up high enough. Okay. 
they had to verify yeah you can't have it just bounce a little bit up and down as you lower the bird it's been done yeah <laughs> so there they verify it and that distance there according to my shuttle scroll could be in the neighborhood of um i'm thinking about 17 feet don't have that exact wing to the ground i got uh the cabin to ground cabin windows to ground so well just kind of you think about this high-tech two billion dollar spaceship you know and when you see people working on it they're real people like your like your neighbors and like frank here uh you use the equipment that you got to get the job done multi multi-billion dollar spacecraft and a five dollar craftsman tape measure craftsman <laughs> at least at least you could return it if it snapped right in there uh, so uh all right so then you got the the usual uh water cooler talk underneath the uh the 747 there uh without the water cooler uh what i found interesting and talked to frank about was they have the the landing gear of the 747 chained down and uh why you don't want it doing a wheelie if there's a load shift. Okay. So, all right, that's a good point. See, I thought it was because of uh, maybe a hurricane. But it's all about the the weight of being shifted as you're lifting up yeah. and moving and so forth. There's a lot more to it than people think. Yes. <laughs> I mean, th uh, 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 two, uh, uh, you know, day and a half job, 36-hour job. Pretty detailed. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, we're grateful that you're sharing these details. And Doug Forrest, I know, is enjoying this in California. He's out there near Rockwell, Doug is. He's an artist. Tom UCX watching in Pennsylvania. Uh, Ophelia Sautero, she's watching in Normandy, France area. We've got international people watching. I'll bet, uh, I'll bet we have Scott Pook is watching in Tasmania, Australia. Or he will be watching. We got uh, Dano Damano. Uh, uh, Marisa uh, Kozrowski, Christopher Mix watching in uh, uh, Wisconsin. Yeah, there's Scott. Good to see you, Scott. The Code Blue Collective. Hmm. We don't know about them, Frank. We know Code Blue is not good, but no. Uh, Steve Hammer's watching. Thank you, Steve. Joshua Ramey, uh, Gary Gerald's our favorite peanut farmer up in Georgia. Uh, Hazel Banks so uh, is watching used to be a secretary to the Apollo astronauts uh, Chris Cowley's watching hello artist friend Chris uh, Dave Stangy and his granddaughter are watching all right and we Dave's are one of our number one fans and can't leave CB out Carlton Bailey a launch photographer who we love sharing his work there CB didn't ask you if you had any mate demate pictures uh but uh we'll be having frank back again to talk about other aspects of his job uh because like i said every aspect of the shuttle you're standing there with a a a procedure manual or whatever uh om omi omi operating operational maintenance instructions operational maintenance instructions did you save any of those in the the closet box in the bottom next to the bowling bag i wish i'd have known about this before because i've thrown out some what CYA documents? That yeah, I there's some gold in them dollar bills. Because you also have test preparation sheets, TPSs, problem reports, BRs, and discrepancy uh -huh. reports, DRs. A lot of paperwork. Well, we we uh, our auctions have some of that. Next auction is going to be August April 29th. In fact, uh, here's a couple of pictures we've thrown in there to show people uh unusual picture what's going on here frank i think like the flight kit people are removing some of the lockers after uh after the orbiter was in the mdd so it's in the mdd now some of the lockers were removed earlier yeah those would have been depends on what the mission was yeah life science or or if yeah. they had live animals or Plus, you know you got to get the uh, hatch open to get the spacecraft operators in there because you're going to have power on the bird so you have to have mm -hmm. them in there for that yeah spacecraft operators we'd love to talk to one of them one day you know any i know a few of them yeah well tell them to stay curious with us frank hope you've enjoyed this today i have uh here's a uh, rare view rare view what are we looking at here you are looking at a view 
from the uh, up the starboard inner deck access hatch to the aft flight deck from the mid deck. And those windows on the bird are located seven and eight located on top of the orbiter. All right, so that's what they'd be looking at on the top of the orbiter for a rendezvous with, say, the Mir Space Station yeah. or something going on right there. You know, you don't see that picture very and, often. And next to those escape bags there. You yeah, have one, two, and three. What's that about? That's for you can blow out that hatch that they go to. Yeah. And they help you slide down the side of the orbiter. After it landed, of course. Yeah, or Because you don't want to thump. No, you don't want to thump. That's, and I've seen pictures of that. Uh, and they have, this, with that. they have the CCTV monitors that are right near those. Gotcha. Oh, yeah. Because they, using, because they go to the cameras from the uh, RMS. Oh, okay. So the remote manipulator later arm is operated yeah. then from there. Uh, very cool, Frank. Thanks for sharing that. And then uh, I showed you this earlier and you cringed. <laughs> Makes you sad, huh? It does. I ain't seen anything torn apart that you spend a lot of time on. Well, and and uh, hundreds of people spent thousands of hours right there, and that's and and now it's at a well been melted down and made into a, a girder on a highway somewhere Man, or something. They were really great people. Yeah, well, that that's and you know, Frank, that's what we love about talking to space workers like yourself is uh, emphasizing the great people, um, the brotherhood and sisterhood that existed there. Uh, speak about that a little bit. You still have some friends from the shuttle days? A lot of them had to move out of state. Some mm -hmm. of them are still here. They'll work for, I know one's working for Blue Origin right now. I know a couple that work for uh, SpaceX. A couple with other contractors out there on the SLS. And what did you do when the final pink slips were passed out in 2011? Well, in my, in my last year there, I had an injury that took me out of work. Uh-huh. And then, uh, then I had a heart attack, oh so my. they laid me off. Okay. Well, uh, hope you're doing well. I've had one of them heart attacks. I'm still on this side ago. of the grass. Yeah, I hear you there. God bless uh, medicine and stints, in my case. <laughs> three of them. And you got three? Yeah. Yeah, cool. We'll talk about that later. There. <laughs> uh, but, uh, well, uh, you know, I've enjoyed uh, meeting you, getting to know you a little bit here. I think Marty has too. Uh, the legacy of the space shuttle cannot be told without the mate, demate device, the MDD, can it? No, because it didn't come by train, did it? No, it did. It didn't. <laughs> uh, they uh, and uh, very important. Uh, uh, you know, love to see the blueprints of this thing when people were putting it together. You know, how are we going to get the uh, orbiter up and off of this thing? Uh, but it flew great. It's quite a legacy of the space shuttle era uh, as it takes off again here. Uh, that, uh, I believe, is out in California. Looks uh, like. Uh, headed back here for another to be put in the OPF, worked up by Terry White. And you worked a lot in the OPF also. Yep. You were everywhere it was. So yeah. you were you were out at Mate Demate, the OPF, the... VAB. Launch pads. Launch pads. And when our birds were on orbit, we'd get loaned out to Bay 2, Bay 3, or Firing Room, wherever. Cool. Firing Room 2, you had duties. We can't wait to talk some more about, about oh, this yeah. with you. So, mm -hmm. uh, uh, well, uh, is there something that we didn't ask you on today's show that you'd like to share with our, our vast audience out there, yeah, you I'm, hit the, I'm sure enjoying this. Yeah, you hit the talking points. Okay. Well, good. Good. Marty, you have anything to add to today's show? Uh, well, yeah, minor, minor thing, thing, you know, uh, I believe there's some MDMs at Tau sites also. You yeah, mentioned it there's MDM here in California, but they have at Tau sites also. Exactly, Marty. The Transoceanic Abort Landing Sites over there in Senegal and... Morocco uh, did have a mate demate device over there, I believe, of some sort. I really don't know. I okay. never, I was never on the overseas crew. All right. Well, we talked to some people who were, and that's a that's a cake job. Okay. <laughs> Going over there with a catcher's mitt, waiting for the shuttle to maybe but never land lands. there. But it was important. And and uh, uh, our good friend Dean Schaff uh, was involved with that as a gom, and I know what a gom is a ground office a ground uh, office manager. 
Ground operations manager. That's GOM. That's I don't what, think I'd want to be a GOM. Uh, no, GOM, that sounds weird. All right. So, anyway, well, we enjoyed talking here with uh, QC295, yeah. Mr. Frank Custer. Frank, thank you for a wonderful thank program you, about things that we didn't know about. Tomorrow is March 17th. All right. St. Patty's Day. All right. And, uh, uh, so also think back folks three years ago tomorrow is when basically our country shut down with COVID. a lot of saint patty's day celebrations were curtailed including in orlando so make up for it so may yeah, so make up for it's right i think some some people already have so tomorrow on stay curious we're going to talk about the da Irish astronauts. Who's your favorite Irish astronaut? Who can you think off the top of your head that was an Irish astronaut? Who am I going to surprise you with? Who is a has some astronaut heritage? Okay, uh, so uh, stay tuned for that. And, and uh, once again, uh, on tomorrow's show, we're going to talk about Irish astronauts on Stay Curious. Again, thank you, Frank Custer, for a wonderful program. Thank you, Mark. Marty. Thanks for a good Streamlabs. Uh, presentation today and until tomorrow st patty's day i'm mark marquez saying i can't wait to wear the green for you and bridge the space between us <laughs>